In life, sometimes, for a variety of reasons, you just gotta take a bath. Like if your shower head's broken and you have no other option, oh, all right, well, let's just take a bath. If you're a caveman, you need to be thought out of the ice like Brendan Fraser and Encino Man. What do they do? They stick you in the bath and just let centuries worth of filth dissipate. And that was us last time. I was Brendan Fraser in Encino Man and I took a bath, but it wasn't just me. It wasn't even just Miss Lippy. Even the kind people over at Area 51 Odd Shopper Premium, even their pick had to take a bath. And it's actually pretty funny because early in the night, I got some messages saying, Andy, it's going to be one of those nights. Edmonton scored on their first shot of the night. The Senators were up three to nothing. Boston was up in the third period, two to one. Well, I mean, the Lightning obviously threw the beating. The early outset, it was like, oh, it's going to be one of those. And then all of a sudden, that price is right horn. Da, 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 but the good news is, I know the overwhelming majority of sailors on this channel are dirty pirates. How do I know this? Because two nights ago, the top comment on the video still is, Detroit ruined it all. What did they ruin? They were one of four picks that didn't go. Oh, that's right. Everything's always parlayed together. So the good news is, now you didn't. You just didn't miss by one pick. At least you don't have to lose any sleepover. It's like, oh, okay. A bunch missed on the parlay ticket, and we can just go on to the next night. Not so much agony for the Pirates when you view it that way. For the regular guys out there, I know you're not so concerned. You've had a great run. It was a rough Tuesday. We're already into Wednesday, and we got a couple tree games on our hands here. We're going to start with the New York Islanders, who have the dead last penalty kill in the NHL. They faced the Edmonton Oilers, who had almost two minutes of a five on three and couldn't score, and more power plays in the game and didn't score on those. The New York Islanders who you've seen blow two goal lead after two goal lead on the road and then at home and then uh, your grandma's house. Every game, leads blown. Edmonton score on their very first shot. Not a single goal for the rest of the game. I mean, as an Islander fan, I'm pretty damn pleased to see it. But that was rather shocking, if you ask me. And now that same Islanders team is going into Washington. And I'm seeing that five and a half total saying, the New York Islanders, but after last night, it's not just me being a prisoner of the moment. I mean, I would love to take the over, but when you think about how Washington plays, they try to win these games playing tight defense. And then when you think about the games between these two teams this year, Islanders went up there, shut them out three to nothing, and Varlamov started that game. Varlamov's going to be starting this game. I will say this for me, if there's a difference in this game, the Islanders, you ready for this sentence? I've never said this my whole life because this hasn't applied once throughout my whole life. The Islanders have the hottest power play, the number one power play over the last month in this league. I, I can't believe it. That's a sentence I've never got to say out loud. And I think overall, they're up to a top five power play in the NHL. I don't think I've ever said that one either. So this is a, I don't know if this is a Christmas gift or a, I don't know what it is other than for me, it's going to be the difference in my selection for this game. I'll start you with a raw dogger. This probably isn't my favorite pick on the night. I know I typically say if a team is playing and then has to play the next night, especially on the road, that's not a team that I'm typically looking to bet on. But as you've seen these last couple couple of nights, you saw it with the Wild, you saw it with the Doug. It is possible. But the difference is the Islanders have a top five power play that's currently clicking. Special teams just won them that game against the Ducks, against the Oilers. They had one shorthanded goal, two power play goals, one three to one. That was the difference. And the Washington Capitals have the dead last power play in the entire NHL or bottom three. But I'm pretty sure it's the worst power play. So the Isles... Their penalty kill, which is supposed to be their Achilles heel, theoretically shouldn't be tested that much by the worst power play in the league. So if you're telling me this game is mostly going to come down to the Isles power play and five on five and Varlamov, who's played extremely well, especially against the Capitals this year, I'm going to go with the New York Islanders in this one. Not the strongest pick in the world, but I will tell you this, these last couple games, if you once again see Mike Riley and Kyle Palmieri listed at 1.5 as their shots on goal, 
I'm going to take the over on that every single day. They have been key figures on offense the last two weeks or so. And if they're going to leave it at one and a half opposed to two and a half, I'm going to go over. So if you're on one of the sites that allows you to put multiple player prop shots on goals together in a bet, I would put those two together over one and a half for Mike Riley and over one and a half for Kyle Palmieri. So that's what I got for you in that Islanders one. Then we're not going to turn our back on Area 51. They won, what, eight or nine in a row before that? First of all, let's give them a nice golf clap. That's one hell of a run to be on in a row. So I'm going to knock on their door and say, hey, I don't bail on people who win that many. I know many of you guys want to do that after one bad night. Yeah, don't turn your back on one bad pick from Area 51. You come back, all right? They're reverse engineering alien spacecraft. You think it's easy once in a while. You got to tinker, you make a mistake, and then you spit out the next one. And that next one is the over six and a half. You listen in Stevie Bong Rips with your Detroit Red Wings and the Winnipeg Jets, which is very funny because the Winnipeg Jets, for us, have been a huge under team. They've cashed a lot of unders for us, including on Monday night. But this is different. What's different about this one? This isn't the Montreal Canadiens coming into your building. This is the, oh, we're not really going to play defense and we have a top seven offense, Detroit Red Wings. They've added Dylan Larkin back last game. So I see where Area 51 is coming from. I definitely do. We'll see if they have Hellebuck in net once again. But there is the opportunity for this one to potentially go over. And what's the beautiful thing when Area 51 dishes us an over? What's the best part about that? You guys remember that. We take an over to build one of our Bet Rivers ruckus same game parlays. We're going to go over to Bet Rivers. We're going to take one point for Josh Morrissey on Winnipeg and two points for Dylan Larkin, who returned in the last game. Didn't do much last game. I think he'll be more involved this game. Give me two points for Larkin, one point for Josh Morrissey, and the over six and a half. And you can do that at Bet Rivers, where your first bet's going to be risk free up to $500, $250, or $100, depending on what your state you're in. How do you know what state you're in? As I said yesterday, look out the window, find a sign. It will probably tell you. But if you click the link down below in the description of this video, when you sign up at Bet Rivers, it will tell you how much that first bet is risk free. If you or anybody you know has a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. And you can access all the Area 51 Bunker Analytics bets by subscribing to Odd Shopper Premium. I've also included that link down below in the description of this video. And that leaves us with one game. And that's the LA Kings at the Seattle Kraken. Interestingly enough, over the weekend, I gave the Kraken a plus one and a half. I liked their spot after they had a good win before that to at least keep things close against the Kings. And the Kings, as you saw last night, and they're getting back to playing that really good defense. And I'm just going to kind of borrow that Winnipeg Jets under and just slide it over to the Kings. Kraken, what did I say about them a couple nights ago? When your top-listed point producer, in terms of odds, is a defenseman, you're not really the highest scoring team out there. You're not really an offensive juggernaut. And when the Kings play a top five defense and they're going to be on their home ice, I'm going to pick this one to go under six and a half. It's a don't you know, bump it up under six and a half between the Kings and the Craig. And if you know, Andy, you told us to take the under six and a half in the Vegas Carolina game. What happened? What happened? I don't know. Carolina is even better than I thought. Maybe you guys should have listened. All right, I'll be back with you tomorrow for a larger slate on a Thursday. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. Make sure you're subscribed here to the Odd Shopper channel along with my YouTube channel, which you can access by clicking my name in blue in the title of this video. You're going to see my name in blue. You click that. Oh, I'm at Andy's page. Shouldn't be too hard. I will be back with you guys tomorrow to talk some Thursday night bets. Take it easy.